What's up, fam? Welcome to another video. If you haven't met yet, my name is Ted, and I talk bass. I know I look like shit. That's okay. It's a very cold day here in New Orleans. I'm out riding my bike and thinking about new content to put out and bass content to put out. And I'm thinking because where I'm riding at right now, this place used to be a Burger King. When I was about 12 years old, back in the day, this used to be a Burger King. Across the street, directly across the street, is a church, one of the first churches that I went to um, with my mom around that same time. And it got me thinking to, you know, about, you know, playing bass and coming up in that era. And I want to be very frank with you guys about uh, why you suck at bass or why you think you suck at bass or why you're not getting better at bass. Weekly, I have somebody that wants a lesson. And I love teaching. I love giving lessons. But there are a couple of things that I ask right off the bat. I ask, what are you listening to? What are you listening to? And nine out of ten times, nobody can tell me what they're listening to, right? They can't tell me what they're listening to. How does that relate to what I just said about growing up in New Orleans and the church and all this stuff? Back in, back in my day, back in those days, there was not the tyranny of choice that there is now. When I got my hands on a record, I listened to that record. Everybody who watches this channel, you know that my, my deal when, when I was that age was, was funk and R&B and mostly the Minneapolis sound. That's what I was listening to. So every Prince record that was out at the time, I knew those records like the back of my hand because that's what I was listening to. It wasn't like I had something, it wasn't like I had some kind of, uh, you know, different information coming at me, you know, all the time. So like you do, you're not listening to what you want to sound like. And then some people are like, they go from like zero to Jocko or zero to Marcus Miller without listening to like my girl and then stuff like that. I'm not saying this to, to like admonish you. I'm not saying this to, to, you know, I'm not saying this to be a dick. You know, I don't normally cuss on my, on my content, but like, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. I'm trying to be very honest with you and I want you to be very, very honest with yourself, right? I didn't just go from zero to the, the most complicated Larry Graham bass lick. You know what I mean? I can remember one, one of the songs that I learned how to slap on was the B-side of Are You Serious? Uh, it was a song called Are You Serious? It was on the B-side of uh, Voices Carry by Till Tuesday. Amy Mann. Amy Mann. If you grew up in the 80s, you know that song. Hush, hush, keep it down now. Voices Carry. It's a song about domestic violence. Anyway, so goals. So if, you, if you're not listening to anything, you don't really know what your goals are, right? Your goal is if you want to play at your church and you play CCM, right? Then you don't need to be worrying about all the licks and all the, you gotta crawl before you can walk, right? You know what I mean? Nine out of 10 times, whoever's mixing your CCM church, they are not hearing nothing you playing anyway, right? And that's just the nature of that genre. Um, so you gotta define what your goals are and you have to be honest about whether or not you need, you are going to do what it takes to, re to reach those goals. And you may look at Instagram and see a guy with like six pack abs and you'd be like, damn, it would be nice to have those. But let me be honest. I don't want to put in the kind of work that it takes to have that. Right? It's okay if you don't want to put in the kind of work to have that. Just be honest with yourself about it. You know what I mean? Just be honest with yourself about it. I love teaching. But, you know, and when, when, and when I have adult students, I let adult students, you know, you, it's your money, it's your time. Or whatever, but I don't, I don't police like adult students, you know what I mean? Here's some things to practice. Here's some things to work on. Either you're going to work on those things or you're not, right? Again, I'm not trying to be a dick and I'm not trying to, you know, just like jump all over you. I'm trying to say that you have to be honest about what you want and what you're willing to do to get that thing, right? So, goals. Listening. You got to listen, right? You have to listen. So, those are like the main two things. You know, like, again, please don't take this as a, um, as an admonishment. It's not, it's kind of a wake up call. It's kind of a, you know, I don't know, reality check. Like, like y'all don't need, I'm not a guru, right? I'm just a dude that's been playing. I've been playing bass. I started playing the bass in 1983. And sometimes I'd be thinking, man, 
I should be way better than I am. It should always be like that. It should always be like there should never be an arrival point, right? You should always feel like you're you're progressing in some way, right? Um, but the reality is, is that some guys and girls, you know, some of y'all want, you know, some of y'all are in your 30s, 40s, 50s or something. And you feel like the bar is that kid that's playing, you know, a thousand notes a minute. And there is nothing wrong with that if that's what they do, right? I don't have that kind of time, <laughs> right? I don't have that kind of time or the desire to, um, to invest in what it takes to do that. It's back to the, the abs analogy, right? You know, again, I'll go back to, you know, some cats want to play at their church, right? You want to play the hill songs and the, and the whatnot. And that's cool. There's nothing, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Some of you guys want to, you know, if you want to play country, if that's your bag, then you got to be listening to the country records, right? You got to be, you got to be feeling, you know, what is it about the, okay, I could play this. I could physically play it, but I don't really understand what I'm playing. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was, right? I played by ear. I was that typical dude in the neighborhood, picked up a bass, learned a bunch of licks, learned, you know, a bunch of songs and whatnot. But then it got to a point where I was like, I want to know why I am playing what I'm playing. Why am I making the choices that I'm, that I'm uh, making? Why, if, if I'm listening to something, okay, why does that sound so good? And then you start picking up on that language, right? So, um, yeah, you don't need hours on YouTube. You don't need a fancy course. You don't need to buy a bunch of lessons. You don't need to do that. You need to stop and sit back and like kind of listen. You know what I mean? Listen to what you, you know, if you wanted to learn how to speak, I don't know, Arabic, right? Well, you could get you some apps on Arabic, but nothing is going to, you know, nothing is going to help you speak Arabic, like immersing yourself in situations and places where those, where you have to speak Arabic. You know, a lot of folks get their, uh, you know, that they, I, I want to get my sight reading. I want to get, you know, sight reading together, man. Look, I didn't read until I was 35 years old. Right. I mean, really read. And that happened not because I not just because I have the desire to read, but I also put myself in positions where I had to read. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that you have to go back to I went back to school at 35. I got my bachelor's at 41. Um, I wish I would have done that a, a lot sooner, but that's when I did it. Right. But when you're in school, you have your academic classes and then you have your practicum which is your, you know, your, your applied music lessons and stuff like that. You have recitals, you have things like, and, all, and you have concerts. There's no way you're going to go to, to uh, at least where I went to school, you had to be in ensembles. You had to, you know, do performances and things like that. There's no way of getting, getting around reading. And so how did I get better at reading? I just read. I just read. Period. Right. And you can too, but you have, but unless you put yourself in positions where you have to do it, you will, and you know, there's guys that have, you know, set new year's resolutions. I'm going to read this the year. I'm going to get my reading together this year. I'm going to get my reading together. You, you go hard for like, you know, a month or so, and then it's done. Then next year you're talking about the same thing. Again, I may be, you know, I'm, I, I don't want my tone. Don't mistake my tone. I just want you to be honest. Honest about it. Those are the main two things. You know, like, pare down. What What is it that you're listening to? What am I... You know, sometimes people will tell me stuff that they're listening to. Number one, they can't name an artist. They can't name a genre. You know what I mean? And then when we start getting down into the finer details, it's like, that shit doesn't even have bass in it. What are you talking about? Right? So, you know, I came up in an era where we played real instruments. And I'm not, I'm also not knocking, you know, you know, kids these days, they make music with computers and they make music with drum machines and they make, they make music with the things that they have available to them now, as we made music with the things that were available to us at the time. So I'm not knocking any of that. So, you know, if you're a, you know, a, a, a kid and you're like, I want to be a good bass player, 
you know, I would still say that the things you need to listen to, you need to go back. You need to go back and start, you know, why do you want to play the bass, right? You can't, like, want to play bass and then discount disco, like, you know what I mean? You can't play bass and discount the Beatles. Paul McCartney is an, an important bass player, you know what I mean? No matter what you think about the Beatles, he's an important musician, an important bass player. He's as important as Jocko. He's as important as Marcus Miller. He is as important as... Um, James James uh, uh, James Jamerson right Eden Neeson is as important as Brown Mark right if you're into that style so you know I, I mean it's just goals and being honest about what you really are willing to do to attain those goals I've had to be honest with myself about that in my own life and so I just wanted to make a quick video while I was out riding my bike um, and really riding around shit just around the corner was one of the first studios I ever recorded at. That's one of the cool things about New Orleans, being back here at home in New Orleans, is I can ride around and I can see all these very pivotal points in my life, these markers in my life, not just as a person, but as a, as a m musician. You know what I'm saying? And remembering where I was. Shit, I got my heart broke for the first time at the bus stop right there on the corner. You know, it's, you know, it's home. That's, that's, you know, the home part of it for me. So, um... I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you give it a thumbs down and you don't like it, do me a solid. Tell me why you didn't like it. Um, if you if you got the time to do that. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. I hope y'all are safe and healthy and happy. I got to go brush my teeth and take a shower. I'm out here grimy, grimy, but I cared that much about what I wanted to say to just make the video right now. So, peace. Two fingers.